Hello again, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard with a room core cup and some enamel paints and some color shift from folk art uh, that I love and glasses actually on my face this time and I am using my folk art gloss enamels as a place to start and I'm just going to alternate other colors and I'm going to set my ring pour cup aside as soon as I get a chance. Let's see if I can get these to go in the way they're supposed to. And I'm using odd colors, but that's okay. Some of them are not coming out at all, but that's Prussian blue. That's usually Grumbacher, but I think can also be something else. Here's my color shifting purple. And I did free up my copper. Copper makes mud for me, but I still like shimmery mud, so I'm going to go for that. These are definitely different colors than usual, and some of them have decided while I went in the house to clog up, so I apologize for the moment. But it takes me to unplug one of these. It can be pretty fast. Sometimes it's just some kind of flotsam that's in the in the rings already like that that got loose the last time I unscrewed the top. I am going to use the white enamel even though I don't always like the effect that it has and take some of this other stuff because I do like the effect in general that the enamels have. These are going to be really odd colors. I'm trying to use up some colors that I have had hanging around for quite a while. And I'm definitely testing fate with uh, my color choices, I gotta say. I'm gonna put some black enamel in there too. And whatever I'm missing, I will just go ahead. I'm gonna take this 10 by 20 inch canvas and move this other stuff away. Try and get that little stuff. Floats from a jetsam. It's very windy here right now. I am not sure how that's going to work. I should just rotate the turntable, right? <laughs> Silly girl. I want to play fast and loose with what? With this? Maybe I'll just add that after. So I'm going to start and bring my spatula over to my edge. And then I'm going to wipe it off along the top because that seems to work for me. Then I'm going to spin around, go back from the other side. I just scraped down a canvas and I should not do that. These colors are a little different because they've been sitting around for a while. I was pretty sure I'd shaken them, but I'm not as sure as I was. I'm just going to keep knocking those off. And I do have an edge catcher underneath the edge of the canvas, so it's easier for me to scrape off whatever I might want that's falling down there. I also use my fingers pretty freely. But I like the edge catcher. That is in the canvas. Yeah, they don't always prime them so nicely. So now that I've got that, I'm really thinking about, what is that? It must have come off my hands. Well, I've got a gray cloud in my otherwise yellow sky. But that doesn't matter because I'll be going on in spite of that. So let's just knock the rest of this paint right off. And I wanted a sky and I'm probably not done skying myself. I'm going to grab some magenta. Whoop, that is an edge catcher at my feet. The wind is just merciless today. Everything is going everywhere. So that's what I wanted. Ha! Ah, I love it when a plan, an or non-plan comes together. And I'm, I'm even afraid to go back and do anything to that magenta right now. And I've got some great texture at the bottom. And I think maybe what I'm going to do is allow myself the pleasure of just putting some more of that down there. And maybe some Prussian blue right at the horizon line. this with a 
Princeton, excuse me, with an OXO omelet turning spatula. And the wind did just whip a bunch of that right into my sky. So what am I going to do? I don't want green up there. Well, it is what it is. I'm going to clean off my spatula. Actually, I'm going to throw it in the bucket and grab a clean one. Run my finger along that little edge. I can leave my paint heavy like that. Because I use GAC 800 in all of my mixes. I do have occasional trouble. Alright, I have consistent trouble getting my edges covered. So what I want to do now, I have my colors. There's another spatula in the bucket. And my edge catcher is in position, although it's not really big enough. I'm going to move this one back. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to make a riotous mess of it, just because sometimes the weirdest things work out the coolest. And that's why we're going to try the coolest weird things. I just... Okay. I took that edge catcher and I put it away so the wooden w wind wouldn't take it. And now that enamel laden. I got another one. This will do. Just knock the sand off it first. It's been extremely windy. So I'm going to take this canvas and try not to touch it too much. I use my thumbnail basically. I'm going to just hold that in position while I let this go across and back. I didn't put any green in there and I do see something. What is that? Okay, that's not something I'm going to worry about. I'm going to grab some minty green. Even if it's showing that there's a lot of flow draw in there. I did shake it. I just didn't shake it well enough. And while I'm at it, Really? Maybe not. <laughs> well, I'm not going to come this close to having what I want and then not use it. And I will clean that tip out in a minute. So I'm just going to let those things roll again with the thumbnail on the top. Come on! If I get it mostly across the bottom, spread up and down, then when I go to have it all go down, and then, anyway, I'll show you in a second. Some of you have seen this before. Let's hope we get something interesting. I'm just going to let everything go down there for a second. Travel to the other side. I'm going to try and remember to rock my edge catcher to cover my bottom. Not rolling the paint down onto my arm. I know, it looks tricky. Try it though, it works. Okay, all that's rocked. Now I'm going to go right back up there again. And flow it down. I'm going to use what's on my edge catcher in a moment. Like I said, sometimes the funkiest colors create the most interesting patterns, so... Now I didn't use the, the already schmutzed up paint from the top, from the bottom half on the top, so make sure if you hold your edge catcher, make sure you're not adding top to bottom or bottom to top. So I can take all of that paint, and I will in a moment, right after I see what happens without hopefully flipping anything back in. Now when you, you can see there's a wave of paint and I can see there's a wave of paint too. And I'm filling in by rotating the mass of paint puddle. You gotta be a lot careful with those edge catchers because they will flip right back into your work. All right, so, and the wind. The wind is merciless. I've got another clean spatula, knock the water off it and we got a cool scape, and I just stuck my finger right in there. 
that's okay. I might not have seen the, the green there. I'm going to take this off a little bit at a time. And I want to show you how I do this, but it's basically just sliding the spatula along the surface as level as I can get it on the edge catcher. And now I can definitely go back again if I want to and tip, but that's a kind of a cool scape with different colors than usual. I'm just knocking the last of whatever's on my spatula off using my Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatula. Another useful tool. Both of them are available on my Amazon link below, Shimor. And if you go there, um, you'll find them on list number one and all kinds of other stuff. And uh, you can shop there at no added cost to you and it helps me out. And I appreciate that very much. So I've still got a mostly clean edge catcher now that I've scraped all the paint off. Well, you know what? I've got <laughs> another one. I'm gonna go in the bucket. I'm gonna use my studio rag, which I definitely recommend, which is nothing more than some heavy cotton. I don't use the textured side. It doesn't seem to get as much paint off. And so now we can see, here's me just grabbing whatever will come with me. I don't really want a whole lot else. <laughs> I'm gonna let that run right up the side throw it back in the bucket and decide right now if I want something else. And because it's my birthday, and it is, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Not that I can't do that every day, because I can. I want some dark green that I did not put in there. And I'm not shaking things enough today, obviously. How about just a little tiny stir? Got all kinds of paint that I can steal. I'm just bound and determined to mess this thing up. But so far, so good anyway. put that over there. I got three minutes left. There's a few things still spreading and that's okay with me. I like it when, this, when the landscape gets bumpy. I can use one of these smaller Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatulas. Giving myself a little bit more territory. <laughs> That's what you want to call it. Okay, so this for me is probably going to be a primary example of what I might do if I'm going to add trees along the horizon line, but I can't really do them right now because it's just too darn wet, and it won't allow me to do it. I've got some more paint left in my ring pour cup. I like what I've got. The sky is a lot darker up there than I really want it to be, and I have a color here, and a desire to be risky. And I forgot about that schmutzy spot down there, so I'm going to do something about that, too. Hopefully. That'll be good. So, I'm not minding most of that. It's a little choppy, but I kind of like that texture. Cloud texture. 
even so much so that I might drag that color right up with my finger. I could probably put some more orange in there if I wanted to. I think I will. I like the canvasy edge to be covered if I can. I gotta clean my hands after this and make sure I don't make that mistake again. Got another little bit of schmutz over there in my sky, but skies are full of gray clouds, so I gotta stop trying to fix it because it looks pretty natural the way it is. Then I'm just playing and that's what I do. You can only play until it starts to get gloppy and then, then no more play. And I'm so close to that, it's a big risk. wipe my spatula off. I've got two minutes left to tell you guys whatever I'm going to tell you, which is I do sell my artwork. I give lessons at the house in Spring Hill, Florida. Under the video there's Teespring clothing and that's got my designs on it and if you shop there it's a big assistance to me. Where's my other orange? I've got a hair in there! I can see it! Tweezers! I just put tweezers on my Amazon link, just in case you need them too. I'm going to use a straw and then we're going to be gone pretty quick. Check the end screens of the video for whichever month exhibition video that will show you what the prizes are. Clean skewer time. And I did get some clean skewers, which is pretty good really tempting to put some of that more pink in here. So much so <laughs> that you just can't trust me not to do it. So I'm just putting it right on that skewer like it was toothpaste. I love you guys. There's 85,000 of you. If you watch the videos longer you have a better, I have a better chance of staying at YouTube if you help me out. The YouTube algorithm only knows how long you watch. So the longer you watch, the more likely I am to be able to stay. I think I got most of that pretty natural looking. We'll see when the trees are going to come, and I don't know when that's going to be. Might be tomorrow. My paint pouring recipe includes GAC 800, and it's under the video. All the configurations and the bottles, blah, blah, blah. On my uh, channel, you can find playlists. Uh, 11 of them with, uh, with hundreds in them, and... 12 of them with genres, I believe. You can find Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter under the video. You can find Facebook groups, Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group for students, where I show the next day's video often, the night before, and also on the community board, where you can find PayPal and Patreon on my channel header. The community board is right there, and it will also show you what the videos are tomorrow, more often than not. There could come a point in time when that's not the case anymore, but for right now, it still is. I love you guys. There's 85,500 of you, and uh, my sincere wish for 2020 is that more of you get notifications and, and watch videos. You take care for right now, and this is Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida, at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard, reminding you it's a $10 donation to get into the into the monthly drawing and there's usually a lot of paintings, a couple books, and a lesson up for grabs. Watch the video at the end of the end of this video. It's the last 20 seconds. I love you guys. Bye for now. Ooh, that's a big wind.